Today we're talking about Girls Trip! Girls Trip is the latest summer 2017 comedy, American comedy blockbuster, call it what you will. The movie is directed by Malcolm D. Lee, who also directed The Best Man and The Best Man's Wedding and Scary Movie 5. The movie stars Regina Hall, who plays Ryan Pierce, Queen Latifah playing Sasha, Jada Pinkett Smith playing Lisa, and Tiffany Haddish playing Dina. The movie revolves around the character of Ryan Pierce. She's a celebrity, an author of the book, You Can Have It All. She is an inspiration. People look up to her not only because she's a powerful woman and got it all figured out, but she's also in this incredible, perfect marriage with Stuart, played by Mike Coulter. Ryan's funny and well-meaning manager, Elizabeth, played by Kate Walsh, informs Ryan that she was offered the opportunity to be the keynote speaker at Essence Fest, which is a huge festival. And of course, Ryan accepts, but she also sees this as an opportunity to reconnect and reunite with her girlfriends whom she has lost touch with over the years. The title is pretty straightforward. The movie is going to be about girls taking a trip together, bonding, friendship. The trailer pretty much reveals that the movie is about that, becoming an adult, knowing yourself, having friendships, and how important friendships can bring you back to who you once were and who you always wanted to be. First overall impression, the movie is sweet. I liked it. <sighs> to call it a comedy is a bit much. This is a comedy for people who like movies like The Hangover, Scary Movie, maybe the Medea movies. It's typical of American comedy to go into that crude, gross, slapstick humor, pee pee caca jokes, uh, profanity, sexual lewdness to, to get a laugh. It's, it's a lot, it's too much. During those scenes, I was sitting with a grimace over my face just asking, why is this happening to me right now? not enjoying it. My friends were laughing and later they told me it's the kind of things that it goes too far. It goes so far that you laugh out of nervousness. I see these moments being engineered as laugh makers. I don't want to insult people who think it's funny, but I just, this is how I see it. It's so basic. This will make you laugh if I push this button that it turns me completely off. I'm like, I see what you're trying to do. I'm more of the type of person who laughs at things like friends and the office subtle humor, situational comedy, HBO's Insecure. So for people who are like me, this might not be for you. If you like those other types of movies, the more in your face kind of comedies, you will have a blast because there's a lot of scenes that are just served up for you. But luckily this film is not just a comedy and there is more to it. There is heart, there is intrigue, there's a storyline. Pretty early on in the movie, you know where the movie is going. It's been done before. We all know what the end is gonna look like. However, the way we get there is really enjoyable and it's especially because of the meat that every single character brings to the story. The way the actors interact with each other adds layers to this movie that otherwise would have come across as kind of flat. So yes, the cast chemistry is what shines throughout this movie. That's really what you're there for. I loved watching them interact with each other. I loved every character, even the side characters. The vulnerability they would show in certain scenes, that's really what I appreciated the most. They work really well together. And as I was watching it, I was even wishing that they would spin this into the next Sex and the City because that's kind of what you get from these four girls hanging out and being silly and talking man and live in life. And like Sex and the City, the story does revolve around the main character, Ryan Pierce being the Carrie Bradshaw of the movie. So I felt like her character in particular was more fleshed out than the other characters were, unfortunately. I really wanted to know more about the girls. There's some exposition, there's some backstory thrown here and there, but I just didn't feel like it was enough. The one character that suffers the most from it, I would say, is Dina's character. Her character is very two-dimensional. She is the comic relief and even admits to it during the movie. And there are moments when I thought, oh, they're gonna give us more. We're gonna find out how she became the person she is, why she's the way she is, but you never do. We never get anything more than surface from this character. And it's really a disappointment in my view because there was opportunity to to go somewhere there and maybe they're saving it for a sequel 
who knows? I felt the same with Jada Pinkett Smith's character, Lisa. They keep talking about this other woman that she used to be. We see her kind of embracing who she used to be, but the way she goes about it kind of feels like a flipping an on and off switch. It doesn't feel natural, it doesn't feel fluid, and we don't really understand how she was who they say she was and how she became who she is today. I personally didn't get that sense. It really felt like it was written into her character and not embodied by the character. There was a disconnect there that could have been fleshed out more. She really was the Charlotte York character. Of course, Charlotte has a whole series worth of time to develop her character, right? What can you really accomplish within two hours? I get that. I do want to mention that I felt like 25% of the movie could have been cut as deleted scenes. Granted, it could have been because the comedy didn't reach out to me as much as it would have maybe to the audience it was generated for. But I still think that the comedy, some scenes dragged on way too long. I saw when people were laughing, I saw when they stopped laughing, and I saw when the comedy kept going. And its comedic value diminished over time pretty quickly. And those moments could have been actually devoted to more character development and relationship building. Another treat in this movie I will say was the wardrobe. So many times my girls and I turned to each other and like, I want that dress. I gotta have that outfit. I love her hair. There were some questionable choices. One funny moment was Lisa's character in her Puerto Rican grandma outfit. I thought the outfit was cute actually. I really liked it. Dina's a scary spice jumpsuit. I wouldn't advise people wear this in the streets, but she's in the party town. It's a, it's a festival and her body, it just compliments her so well. So wow, hats off to you, Tiffany. Girl, you look good. I think the person who struggled the most with wardrobe, who was the most inconsistent was Sasha's character. And when we learned about Sasha's backstory, the more I thought about it, the more it made sense to me. Even my friend was like, this jumpsuit is not helping you, girl. Her hair was sometimes great, sometimes questionable. I think I loved it when it was curly and to the side. My favorite one was the Britney Spears circa Oops, I Did It Again ponytail with the purple pop and lipstick. Love that. I just wanted to mention that. So the movie is also visually appealing on top of being sweet and entertaining. So overall, every character played their role really well. There was one character that felt kind of thrown in. Julian Stevens, Julian Stevens, played by Lawrence Tate. We could have done without him, basically. I'll get into that later in the spoiler segment. I would say definitely a movie to watch with your girlfriends, at home preferably. I really would call this like a girls sleepover type of movie. PJ's on, junk food is on the floor, you know how we girls like to do and munch away. Yes, I would definitely say this is a movie for girls to reconnect with old friends maybe. It's for bonding, so keep that in mind. If you have to go now, that's okay. Please like and subscribe to M Angel if you haven't already. And for those who are ready to dive into the details, let's get into the spoilery segment.